guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got another great one from Van Halen for you today. It's like three weeks in a row we've been doing Van Halen. We are on a Van Halen roll here. Uh, I did not realize that I had not done their version of Really Got Me. Uh, uh, you Really Got Me. I did, I did not know that. I thought for sure I had done that a decade ago, but I've been... Uh, corrected on this and so I am now correcting that. So we are going to jump onto it today. Before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ring the notification bell so you'll know when I release a new video. And please check out my Guitar Academy at guitarlessons365.com. If you like anything that I do here, everything I do there is 10 times better, promise. All right, so please go and check it out. It's got all my guitar courses covering from complete beginner courses to uh, very advanced courses in technique and improvisation and ear training and theory and guitar tone. So it's a lot of stuff there and I'm adding a lot of stuff every week. So please go over there and check it out. All right, so we are tuned down a half step um, as Eddie does a lot. So um, just E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. The notes are in the description if you need help with that. Hopefully you don't if you're actually kind of attempting Eddie's stuff. All right, so um, let's jump into this main this intro here. All right, classic, you know, right after eruption, right into it. So we're going to start with a slight bend at the a third fret on the low E string. And then, then you're going to hit an A major chord twice. And then another slight bend on the uh, low E string. And then back to the uh, a, a major chord. And there's a quick little down up there with the muted uh, string, so we have this, so we have this. So, so how he plays it is he plays all down strokes until that last, last little, which is a quick down up, so. And then just repeat that. slide up and down and now the rhythm changes a little bit so there's a little up down there it's kind of more laid back and then the last one goes just kind of play that I'm going to do a bend and release there on the um, low E string. So pretty cool, classic intro, can't get that wrong. All right, then we get to verse number one. So verse number one, there's Eddie's always doing fills. So verse number one and two are going to be different because of the fills. So we have verse number one looks like this. pre-chorus when it gets to the B. So we're going to start here with this open, the A chord, power chord hit twice, kind of more subdued. You can roll the volume back if you want, but so hit that twice, A power chord, then the third fret there on the low E, and then back to the A power chord. So this. And then you'll see that when they first hit it, that's it. And then now for from then on through the rest of the verse, they're gonna start that with a third fret on the low E first, so it will kind of lead into it. So this. So after you get to that point, we have our first fill. So what he does here is he starts with a 
a lot of pinch harmonics, by the way. So it's a it's a pre-bend at the uh, fourth fret on the G string. <laughs> And then we're going to, I'll show you the notes first, but you're going to add a lot of pinch harmonics. So it's going to be all downstrokes, really digging in. We're going to have, hit that note again, uh, the fourth fret on the G without the bend, and then the second fret on the G. So 4-2, over to 4 on the D string. And then you're going to hit the second fret on the D string twice. And then the third fret on the A string twice. And then the second fret on the um, A once. So it's basically you're just doing this. But what you're going to do is um, hit the, D, the second fret on the D string and the third fret on the A string, you hit those twice, all the other ones you're going to hit once. So it's like... And it starts over. So we have this... So we're starting the riff over again. A new fill. So that fill starts with a, a, a slight bend at the uh, seventh fret on the G, and then we're gonna play. It. And he's what he's doing is he's playing five seven, and whenever you do use the index finger, slightly pull it down, kind of slight like quarter step bend, then play seven on the G, and then the same thing on the D, same thing on the A. And then turn it, move it down on the A string to three and five. All right. So all together for the first verse. From there, we get to the pre-course. So what I was doing there, I was just kind of adding some of the overdubs. That are in there, so those aren't actually those are that little those little fills that I was doing there. Um, you, you can do those yourself, or you can just kind of keep doing with the riff, which is actually probably a little bit louder in the mix. So anyway, um, we have basically it's a B power chord off the second fret of the A string, then to the um, open A power chord, and then back to the B. So it. up to the fifth fret and then we go start it going up here seven five seven so after so that little you hear that little those little kind of fills that are going on over it or you can just play the full major chords there too. Then to the uh, D power chord down there. Back to the verse. So if you want those fills, you can just do the fills like sort of. Kind of that, that kind of thing. It just kind of just do a fill uh, and bend at the third fret on the low E. Over to the E here. Or sometimes it's fun to just do it like this. So I can just be in position to start the riff over again. So kind of slide three to five. And then play that seven on the A. And then, and then 
there's a band there, the ninth fret there, if you want to feel it. All right, then we get to verse number two, which same riff as verse number one, except different fills. So the fills look like this, or the whole thing looks like this. So there's a couple different fills. So the same riff. And then you have a pinch harmonic. You have a bend at the ninth fret on the B string with a pinch harmonic. You gotta find where that's at on your guitar there. Where that harmonic is. So do that bend and then. Then play, play 7 on the G, hammer 9, pull off the 7, slide down to 6. Over to 7 on the uh, D string, 7 on the A. And then to the ninth fret on the low E and just kind of bend it up for a little bit. Back to that riff. So that's just kind of just trilling here on between five and eight on the B string. And then kind of just tapping whatever finger you like to tap with. So you do a little bit shorter slides at first and then longer. So. All right, and then it's back to the, um, uh, where are we at? Same pre-chorus, same chorus. And then after that, that D chord, we have the solo. So I'll be play through the solo for you real quick, and then we will check it out uh, phrase by phrase. <laughs> So uh, we have uh, this classic Eddie here. So we have a little bit of a phaser on there, and then so it starts out with Johnny Be Good, <laughs> and then it's not Johnny Be Good at all. So we're gonna start a bend there at the uh, seventh fret on the G string. And then we play the double stops here at the fifth fret on the high E and the B together. A couple times, try this. So. so kind of it we just kind of go back and forth between hitting the double stops tw twice and then doing that bend. So. And then we have this. It there with bend, release, pull off to five, and then go back into that bend at the seventh fret. And then we have starting. So kind of a typical when you when he first starts it, you hear um, you just kind of start with just like a five seven, a five, five eight. I'm sorry on the B string, and then he starts tapping. The first time he plays it, he doesn't quite do the full tapping pattern. He kind of starts with just playing tapping 10, and then you pull off to that 5, and then hammer on 8. He kind of, it's like a three note version, of really on the first set of taps. And then from there, it goes to the four full. Where you're going to, so basically the real pattern that you're going to be doing going down. You tap to the 10th fret, all the taps are going to be the 10th fret. And then you're gonna pull off to the five, hammer to the pinky, and pull back off to the five. So that's a four note tapping pattern. So you can just look at it as just a. So it's kind of. 
uh, doing it a couple times on each one. And just take it down one fret now on the in the left hand to four and seven here. Just tap it stays the same. And then three and six, and then two and five. Into a bend in the fourth fret on the G string. Pick the then tap the ninth fret there on the G. And release the bend. Release that bend and then pull off to two. So we have this. Alright, from there we have this. Alright, so we're gonna start slide up here into the 17th, you got slide of the G string and then play 17 on the B and then into a big bend of the 20th fret. And then we kind of just do a kind of some random kind of legato, kind of, kind of a trilling between 17 and 20. With some, he does some vibrato bar there. He's got a floating system. I'm just using my strap for this. So and this resolves it here, the 19th fret there on the G. So it, and then down here. So that's slide up the um, the the D string, the 17 there on the D, 14 on the uh, G, and then there's some bends in the 17th fret there on the on the on the B string. He does some. You gotta kind of rotate between the, like a step or, a, or and then two step bends. And then, and then kind of just come over to the the uh, G string. Uh, bend that up real quick on the G string. Kind of bend it, release. Pull up to 14. Over to 17 on the D. And just kind of do a hammer. 14 to 17. Pull back off. Show you this. So it's just, uh, it's one of those Eddie kind of, like he's using a lot of whammies bar there and just kind of doing a lot of legato stuff. It's not like note for note licks, it's just, kind of just the effect you're going for. <laughs> Alright, and then he ends it with this. Um, it's a bend at the uh, ninth fret on the G string, a, a step and a half bend, uh, so three half steps. And as he does that, he has it set up on his uh, his guitar, so uh, he has a volume knob for each for the neck pickup and the the bridge pickup. Or you can do this just with like a kill switch. It's like a kill switch effect where um, you can have. Or, or does he just have, does he actually have it? Like he had like one pickup. Anyway, he's got some sort of a kill switch that he's flicking back and forth with a toggle um, that he is uh, doing. I'm sure there's a lot of Van Halen historical bums that can, uh, buffs, not bums, you're not bums. Anybody that researches Van Halen is cool. Uh, but anyway, you can say exactly how he's doing it. But it is some kind of a kill switch effect either with the kind of less polished. I know he doesn't have a pickup in one of them or, or whatever, so maybe it's just going to the dead pickup. Uh, but he's toggling back and forth between a live pickup and something that's not. <laughs> so let's just say that. So that's what's going on there. I'm recreating it just by kind of kind of a staccato picking, and it's just because I don't have a kill switch. And then we have a big pick scrape to end the solo. All right, so then we have the breakdown section. So there's a lot of like little sound effects he's doing. He's like taking this pick and going. Just on like the treble strings. And just the edge of your pick. You hear a lot of that, just on the treble strings. And then we have this little three note leg. 
So that's the fifth fret on the G, and fifth fret on the D, and then seventh fret on the A, uh, on the D. And then we end it with just kind of some big pick scrapes and slides or whatever to the pre-chorus again. And then we have the last chorus, which kind of does some more of those. So we have that, and there's a little lick at the end too, I'll show you. So at the end of the solo here, we actually hit that, that A major chord three times. And then to that Hendrix chord, which is the low E open, seventh fret on the, uh, I'm turning the phaser off, that'd be good. Uh, uh, seventh fret on the A. Um, sixth fret on the D, seventh fret on the G, eighth fret on the B. So E dominant seven sharp nine chord. And then we end it with this last lick. died on me there. I got, I got an overzealous uh, noise gate here. So um, what we have here is just kind of just going up and just doing a... So kind of going into this like, side of this 14 on the G over to uh, 12 on the B into a bend there. And then just do that standard blue. Just a couple times just kind of hammering 12 to 15 on the B, pull off to 12 over to uh, 14 on the G. So do that, that's kind of the typical. You're doing that uh, like two or three times. And then you play 14, 12 on the B, I'm sorry, the G string, and then. So then when we get here, we have, if you play that 14, 12, um, you can just go. Hammer 11 to 12, pull back off to 11 on the G. Over to 14 on the D, and then back to that 11. So, so we have this, and then go back down, 14, 12 on the D, and then do basically the same lick again, but starting from the D string. So this. And when I get to that 12, we play that last 12. We play that 12 use. So we have this 12, slide then 11, then 9, 7, 5, and then 2, and then just bend it up. So it's All right, now just after that bend, just hit the E5 power chord just to end the tune, and you are good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of You Really Got Me. It's a really fun to play. Obviously, got some challenging stuff in it anytime you get, you're dealing with Eddie's guitar parts, but uh, it's just a, a blast to play as soon as you get it underneath your fingers. So uh, I hope to see you guys again soon for guitarlessons365.com. I'll see you later.